So my name is Kyle Courtney. I am copyright advisor at Harvard Library. Uh, I am also co-founder and board chair of an organization called Library Futures. When I think about the main benefits of open glam, I, I think there are certainly many benefits, but I'm going to limit it to two. Uh, first and foremost would be increasing access to the world's cultures, right? The arts the artistic and creative expressions and endeavors of humanity are some of the best ways to experience what I perceive of as the best of our human efforts. Our mission derives from the idea, therefore, that we should save and preserve these for future generations. And second, open glam helps drive more digitization of collections in general. The more available, the more benefit to society which in turn, I think, inspires future researchers, scholars, and students to maybe even stand on the shoulders of giants, right? Um, or their predecessors to find new and interesting ways of expressing their own creative version for the future. So that idea that by digitizing the past, we're opening up that ideal future is, is very tied to, I think, the benefits of an open clan mission. Now, as far as barriers, we are seeing a strict interpretation of the law and licensing that I think directly interferes with the GLAM mission. And arguably, licensing culture is, is out of control. The GLAM mission is separate and distinct from the commercial marketplace. And this is something that we have to work to uh, understand both for our community and the communities that we work with. Barriers such as licensing and restrictive terms and agreements can prevent a GLAM organization from doing its work, including preservation, access, sharing the collections with their communities. So we have to work together, I think, to change the dynamic to get around this barrier. Um, we need a greater understanding from all communities that GLAM organizations have a distinct mission that surpasses any marketplace concerns about sales, stock prices, and shareholders. I think the GLAM mission must be preserved in the face of some of the more interesting capitalistic uh, uh, ideologies that we're facing today. Um, both systems, however, can coexist. The marketplace mission can coexist, and the GLAM mission can coexist together. In fact, they have coexisted for hundreds of years. It's just only recently that we've seen this strict interpretation of law. So I think overcoming that barrier would be very critical for the next hundred years of GLAM institutions. And, and part of this comes from what someone else had told me a, a long time ago, Peter Hurdle. He's a, a, an archivist, um, formerly at Cornell and Harvard University. He once said to me, in a talk he was giving or a conversation, I don't recall, but that there can be no preservation mission without including access, right? And as we know, a significant portion of the GLAM mission is to preserve these materials for future generations. But certainly this does not mean that these treasures and artistic endeavors must be hidden in a black box for a hundred years, right? Preservation should be a means to greater access including digitization, applying metadata to making it more discoverable for everyone, not just the communities um, that, that are necessarily aligned with the glamour organization, but everyone. Um, and that, that idea, there cannot be preservation without access, kind of rang true for me at the time and has driven some of my work over the years. And again, this is especially true, I think, for collections inside a glam organization that have not made the jump to digital. It's more likely that we as a glam organization will work to digitize that. We will be the person or the entity that preserves this and makes it accessible. And again, for those works that never made the jump to digital, they might have enormous future potential and value to researchers, scholars, educators, students, and, and lifelong learners. So I think certainly his words opened up that idea that preservation is not just holding something here for a long time, but making it available to the world and making it accessible to communities. So this leads me to, uh, you know, 
the message, the message about people that are hesitant to open up collections for a variety of reasons. I find in my field, much of the hesitation comes with an interpretation of the law that might be old fashioned. <laughs> um, and I understand that. Um, the law can be complex and confusing, and it uses words that don't necessarily uh, indicate that this is meant to be shared, right? Um, but in my mind, forces such as copyright actually derived from the idea that you're supposed to disseminate these materials to other people. In fact, the first real copyright law in the world was an act for the encouragement of learning. <laughs> so that idea that our collections, such as poetry, art, film, music, books, are meant to be open and available when they are given to a GLAM organization. And they're meant to be then shared. And, and especially with those that couldn't necessarily afford to buy them all there for themselves or for their communities, right? That's, that's the foundation of a lot of GLAM institutions. We're here because we know the world can't buy and collect everything and especially individuals. So the idea of an organization that shares access with its materials um, and, and shares it specifically with the communities that come and asking has been around for thousands of years. But now we have the advantage of technology and the convenience of digitization. Um, so wouldn't we want to work together to adapt those technologies to increasing access to our works, right? Let's not worry so much about the law and look at the availability of digitization and technology to further and advance our mission in the modern environment. Many of my students say, if it's not online, it's almost as if it doesn't exist, <laughs> right? And that idea that GLAMs are generally nonprofit cultural and knowledge organizations and our, our work is naturally low risk. We're supposed to share, we're supposed to enhance access. So let's be bold and embrace this low risk to ensure equity and access to our collections now and in the future.